Hello and welcome to my channel. Uh, today I want to talk about EKG interpretation and the first thing I want to say on that is that interpreting EKGs in real life off the monitors is so different than interpreting them on exams where you get the strips. There have been times when I've looked at a monitor and I didn't know what I was looking at. So if that's the case, don't be afraid uh, at work to either ask for or if it's in your protocol, put it in order for a 12 lead EKG. For uh, one, it's easier to read that way and you have multiple leads and everything's paused and you can look at it and it's not like ongoing. And two, you can get it read and interpreted by someone who specialized in cardiology. So that's always nice to have 12 lead EKG if needed. So of course we know normal sinus rhythm, right? A really nice, that's, that's the first thing that should be learned. Um, P, Q, R, S, T complex. You probably already know that. It's really nice. It's beautiful. It's a, an awesome picture, right? It's normal in size, shape, and direction. It's just really nice looking. This is what an EKG should look like right here. So let's get into the abnormals. Let's get into the, the trifecta, right? The heart blocks. First, second, and third degree heart blocks. So something that I like um, is the poem where it goes, if R is far from P, then you have first degree. Longer, longer drop, you have Winky Bach. If some P's don't get through, you have Mobitz too. If the P's just don't agree, you have third degree. Okay, so let's look at let's look at some of them. So R is far from P, you have first degree. The the P wave is consistently there, and the R waves consistently follow. They're just really prolonged. That's first degree heart block. Do you see how the P wave is really far from the R, but they're consistent. Um, there's no missing beats. Uh, they're consistently there. It's just a long, it's a prolonged P from the R wave. Longer, longer drop, you have Winky Bach. You see how the P wave is getting further and further from the R wave, and then it completely drops the complex? That's Winky Bach, or Mobitz 1. So it's getting longer, longer, the P wave is getting longer and longer, and then it drops a, a complex completely. There's no complex here. Longer, longer drop, you have Winky Bot. If some P's don't get through, you have Mobitz too. So you see here, the, these P waves are not having a QRS complex. They're not conducting a QRS complex. If the P's just don't agree, you have third degree. The P waves and the R waves are just not communicating. They're, li they're just beating separately from each other. The, the electrical conduction system is just independent of one another. You can see here the P waves and the R waves are really just beating separate from each other. There's no consistency here. There's, there's no consistency whatsoever. There's a there's a P wave. There's a P wave there and a P wave there and a, and a P wave there. It's just completely inconsistent here. <clears throat> so the P's just don't agree. You have third degree. They're they're just beating separately from the R waves. Um, so let's get into some atrial dysrhythmias, right? AFib. Uh, AFib, when I think of fibrillation, fibrillation in general, uh, it's just quivering. Rather than pumping effectively, it's just quivering there. And that's kind of what you see in the, in the EKG. The electrical conduction system that's causing it to quiver kind of shows up as quivering also. Also, AFib is Frequently irregular, there are times where it's regular in, in the clinical setting, but frequently on exams, it's irregular. And uh, if you have uncontrolled AFib uh, on the monitor, you'll frequently see it bouncing around. It's like 86, and then 92, and then 78, and it's it's just a quivering uh, atrial line. There's no P waves, so that's that's AFib. Atrial flutter, people commonly call it the sawtooth, a sawtooth waveform. Why do they call it that? Because this is like a sawtooth knife, right? Let me see if I can. That's like a sawtooth knife. You see how that lines up with atrial flutter? Sawtooth knife and sawtooth waveform. It looks like a sawtooth knife, right? So that's atrial flutter. So instead of it just being that small little quivering line, it's more of a sawtooth pattern. So supraventricular tachycardia. Technically, we already gave two examples of SVT with AFib and A flutter because if you think about it, supra ventricular tachycardia. It is a tachycardia, a fast heart rate, that's occurring a supra above the ventricles, right? 
supra ventricular tachycardia. So AFib and a flutter count as that. But usually on the exam, what they're talking about when they say SVT and in the clinical setting is, is this. It's a heart rate faster than 150. Um, you can't really tell if it's a P wave or a T wave. It's like this uh, large kind of looking like P wave there. So that's usually what they're talking about when they say SVT. Um, also paroxysmal atrial tachycardia or PSVT. This is what they're usually talking about. Ventricular tachycardia, VTAC, there it is, it's ugly, it's so scary, you should have at least one nightmare about VTAC. VTAC is this run of mountains here, right? This is what it looks like, I don't know, I don't know what else to tell you, this one, it should be easy to remember. Torsades de Pont, um, I like to say it like that, Torsades de Pont, this is a type of polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. Uh, and poly meaning many, morphic meaning form. So uh, there's diff many forms of the VTAC here. Instead of having this, instead of having this consistent run here of mountains, you have these hills and mountains, and it's just like it's it's VTAC with ADHD. It's all over this rhythm strip, right? And bonus tip: the answer is always treated with mag. That's on every exam. Ventricular fibrillation. So you can see this is not the pronounced uh, R waves. It's just a quivering line. Again, remember fibrillation. It's just this small quivering line. No, nothing really pronounced here. This is much scarier than VTAC. It goes VTAC, VFib, asystole. And a junctional rhythm. There is no P wave or the P wave is inverted. And the way that I remember that is if the P, especially if the P wave is inverted, I think of it like a J. Here there is no P wave. You see, you see how it's just a flat line up to that, that's junctional rhythm. If the P wave is inverted and then it goes up to that R wave, it looks like a J, right? So that's junctional rhythm. It's usually really slow, 40 to 60. If it's faster than 60, then it's accelerated junctional rhythm. Don't let that throw you off. There's no P wave or it's inverted. That's junctional rhythm. Can it be faster than 40 to 60? Yes, usually it's slower. Then it's just junctional rhythm. So those are the rhythms that I think are most commonly tested on and the most common arrhythmias. I'm not gonna go into idioventricular rhythms or uh, sinus pauses. You probably have some awesome resources for that. So I hope this helped a little bit. Uh, best of luck in your studies. Good luck on your exams. Um, <laughs>